everybody. Welcome back to the Geek Branch Podcast. We are still on Branch Wars, and we are going to discuss about a Korean drama that I absolutely loved. It's called When the Camilla Blooms. It is uh, a Korean drama that is on Netflix, so go watch it. I mean, most people have Netflix, and if they don't have Netflix, they have a friend that they share their, uh, they take their Netflix account uh, from, so everybody has Netflix pretty much. Uh, so I'm just going to give a brief synopsis of uh, the show, and then we'll just roll right away. Uh, so uh, the show starts with the focus of a single mother known as Dumbecky. Uh, she is living in a small town of Ongsan. Uh, she runs this bar restaurant known as Camilla. So makes sense why the title is what it is. Uh, while also taking care of her son Pilgu, uh, she is frequently gossiped about uh, in the small town. She grew up as an orphan. She is a single mother, uh, and uh, she, as I said, is a owner of the one bar in the entire small village. Uh, so uh, a lot of men come in and frequent there, and so a lot of upset wives are uh, constantly complaining. Uh, regardless of what the locals whisper about Don Becky, local police officer Wong Young Shilk uh, is deeply in love with her. Meanwhile, Don Becky's ex-boyfriend, uh, King uh, Jong Ril, uh, suddenly reappears in her life. Uh, he is a famous baseball player that hid their relationship while they dated. While Don Becky tries to find happiness, something truly sinister uh, lurks in the background. A ser- serial killer known as the Joker uh, roams Ongsan, and Don Becky may be a target. Uh, so, the reason why I really loved uh, this show. Uh, and, and I've discussed about this before with the guys. Uh, Dom Becky is, of course, as I said, an orphan, a uh, single mother, and a bar owner. All three of those things are uh, very negatively looked on in the uh, Korean, South Korean community. Uh, it is very stigmatized. Uh, when she is an orphan, uh, nobody wants their kids to play with her. It's like a curse, they think. Uh, and then with her being a single mother, they wonder what happened to the husband or did she have a husband? Was she just some some hooker that got pregnant? That's essentially what they think. And then with her being a bar owner, they, that solidifies what they believe because they think a woman that's a bar owner must be loose, essentially. And so uh, when she first starts in the show, a lot of people don't like her because of bias in their community. Uh, so as time goes on, uh, the uh, community learns more about her and uh, really is really the talk of the town. A lot of the women are actually jealous of her in reality. And so as time goes on, they start to let go of their prejudices and their stigma of uh, what their ideal of, of a person that's a single mother or uh, owns a bar. And they learn to love and, and protect her from uh various things that uh, are constantly in the way of her her uh, life and she also has a lot of fulfilling moments like finally seeing her mother again and learning why her mom abandoned her and how she really didn't abandon her at the end of the day she was constantly trying to watch and protect her in the uh, shadows and uh, it's just a comical series in general with the uh, the local police officer he's just a comedic character uh, over the top but absolutely adores her uh, I know Dane has actually watched the show. So, what what did you think about it? Well, I I enjoyed it, so I would recommend it also. Um, yes, it is comedic, and it leans about fifty fifty between comedy and serious matter. So, it, it's on the tolerable side for me. But um, so the thing that I really enjoyed most about the characters, or sorry, the, the series actually, is the characters and the character dynamics, mm-hmm. uh, because. It's kind of a foreign microcosm of interactions that is really interesting to view. And for a lot of people who don't do K dramas, C dramas, uh, there's no such thing as J dramas because Japanese live action really isn't worth paying attention to. <laughs> but um, there's the T dramas, yes, and ta- yes, and the Taiwanese. Those are the, those are actually the big three. Japan is, yeah. sticks with anime. Um, 
as as it goes, um, the reason why these are also interesting to watch for us as Americans, or just if you're a European viewer who isn't familiar with the culture, is that it is completely foreign. It's like stepping into a fantasy world because the things that are perfectly acceptable here in our lives after, you know, our societies have developed to this point are unique and strange over there. So uh, being an orphan is... Korea is a very family centric society. Yes. They that's their everything is about family in, in South Korea. Right. Or yeah. even North Korea too, really. Well, I mean North Korea is unique, so yeah. let's not let's yeah. not dive down into that hole. Um because <laughs> you're gonna go off to another show. So Yes. <laughs> but anywho, um so in South Korea your family isn't just your relatives. They are representative of you. They are tied together with you. They're kind of like something that you walk around with on your shoulder that is personally seen and judged by everyone. So if you're from a wealthy family with a lot of successful people, in it, even though you yourself may not have achieved much in life, all of your family's prestige also kind of walks around with you in a way that that wouldn't actually matter in america so much you know if you run across somebody you meet and you discover that their brother is the ceo of some company you're like all right well cool good for your brother yeah whatever (laughs) right but uh, it's me and you that we're talking about we only care about this personal dynamic well in korea it's really hard to achieve that they need to know who your family is what your family does what's your history that influences how they perceive you much more than it does in a western society right um, another thing that was really interesting is the position of, you know, women. So, um, as far as, uh, the West goes, women have been very independent and well as, uh, very much so standing equal to men in society. As far as, um, most things are concerned, that's specifically just for the West in Korea and in Eastern cultures, they still have more traditional uh, norms than here. So female business owners and female business women are relatively new, and kind of like a pop-up of the last three or four decades, really like last three decades. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's not very commonplace and it's very unique. And like with all things that are new and coming in, there's a lot of, you know, friction as it's being introduced into their society. So finding a woman that is both single and has no invested interest in forming a marital relationship, as well as finding a woman that is owning and operating a business independently without support of staff or in uh, most cases as a part of a larger company. It's bizarre to them. Yeah, it, it, it's unique. And it's almost as weird as, you know, coming across somebody that has, like, a really unique uh, genetic feature. Like, the first time you meet a redhead, a natural redhead, you're like, well, that's cool. I didn't know hair could be that color. A lot of people have a hard time, you know, interfacing with it. And so, obviously, they need to find some common way of explaining it within their own means. And those ways are mostly negative. So... Why would a woman be able to open up a single business? Most women don't have that type of income. Right? Where, where so do they get it from? Where do they get it from? And so they jump to obviously wrong and tends to be unfavorable conclusions. She has a child. When she first arrives in the uh, village and starts moving in, everyone needs to know, well, who's the dad? She, you know, who's your husband? Well, yeah. not even who, no, who's the dad. It's who's, who's your husband, husband? Yeah. and where does your husband work? And is he working here? Is he coming here? Is he staying here? Are you staying here while he goes to work overseas? Every right. every conclusion they can ever reach is within their own norms. They And then when she finally is honest with them, because she isn't lying about it, she just tells them up front, there is no father. This is just me and my son. Right. That's just like telling them I'm from Venus. <laughs> it's, right. It's like the, the 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 dad did not know that the son existed. Right. Not that he was, you know, a like, you know, negligent father in any way. No, he, as he, soon as he found out, he was like devastated that he did not support her. Yeah. Which I mean, it's also kind of his fault anyway. So it's a little bit. I mean, she in my I, opinion, she should have told him. Well, sure. But she, she saw how he reacted. When uh, they took a pregnancy test and she lied to him and said that she wasn't pregnant and he was like over the top relieved. Yeah, because he was career focused. Yeah, because he's a bit, well, he, I think he actually played in the States for a while, not in real life, but in the show and he came back. Yeah. Yeah. And he's very popular. Like, yeah. like he's a. He's a superstar gener- to them. Right. He's a, he's a generally, because he's from their hometown is the reason why he's super popular in the town. Yeah. But. 
even in Korea as a whole, he's a noticeable figure because he yeah. appears on TV several times. Yeah, it's so, his own reality show. Essentially, the Korean keeping up with Kardashians type of thing. Type of thing. So, so yeah, and so with his personality and his desires, she it really is his fault that she he, knew. Yeah, yeah, that he he blatantly informed her as to how he would feel about this situation. So she just went along with. She what, wanted to have this kid. Right. And she wasn't going to let him get in the way of that. As well as he didn't want to know. You know, he, not really. He, he, he did not want yeah. to know, so she just didn't tell him. And then, I, I never want to hear anybody who finishes the series be like, all right, well, it, she, she was wrong to not tell that guy. He did not want to know. Yeah, <laughs> but it's the dynamic with the son and the father when they figure out, when the son figures out that that's his dad. He's so mad at his dad, and I don't think he should be as mad as he well, be. well, because it's, he he doesn't fully understand. Yeah, he the situation. doesn't fully understand the situation, and he's extremely protective of his mother, but which was is, understandable. He is like verbatim, exactly like his dad, though. That, oh yeah, yeah that kid his, is his. <laughs> yeah, you definitely find out in the last episode. His he's definitely his dad. 100. But yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, leading back to the cop. Now the cop has a comedic bent, and he is the character with the most comedy uh, linked to his character because he has a, uh, and it's really weird, but, like, in Korea, there are people who have, like, living dynamics is the best way you could think of it. Uh, so it's like a character archetype. Yeah. And He's the over-the-top. T- over the top. Well, well, not not just that, but, like, okay, so, like, imagine if you could be typecast in real life. So like that's I'm, that guy. Y- yes, they it's think really he's what a total idiot. But not only that, but like okay, so so the way his life works is this: it's almost as if God stamped onto his forehead enemy to evil or just enemy of bad guys. Yes, because his entire life is a series of random events where he comes across a crime, feels the need to interfere, and then does so, and then he becomes a cop because they're basically like you got to stop doing this because, as a civilian. Yes, yes, cuz he's interfering with police work. So so like just become a cop, please. Like he he's randomly working at his job as a delivery person. And as he's delivering this package and he delivers it to this house, he goes by someone else dressed as a delivery person and that delivery person is actually an arsonist. And because of their weird interaction, he discovers the arsonist and captures the arsonist. Here's a citizen award. And then repeat this all throughout his life that just by going and doing random things, he comes across a bad guy in the middle of doing a crime, and interferes. He becomes well known as a hero. Right. And so it's it's defined his entire life. It's like literally he's been typecast. Yeah. He, he, he's meant to be the cop. And he's never cared uh, to be with a woman until he meets Dumb Becky. Yeah, well, because it's love at first sight. He yeah. randomly comes across her at a bookstore and then just completely becomes inept. Yeah. He, he literally becomes inept. He is to, to the point that she thinks he's a stalker. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and, and until that actually gets, like, you know, cleared up. So that's definitely a part of the comedy with it. Um, And it, the way he shows love to her is just, like, over the top. Yeah, because he's really emphatic. And he's, he, he definitively is a, like... Out there in your face, like big character, uh, he is. And in and, and, and a, a, a bit, an interesting uh, dynamic is is that uh, his dad uh, died before he was born. He was the last one to be born. So his mom is actually a single mother that had to come up with her own business. And uh, it's kind of his mom and uh, Dumb Becky's mom are a parallel uh, of what happens when one goes down the path of keeping the kid and one goes down the path of she tried her best with any possible way to, uh, to feed the kid, to, to, to have a place for them to live and nothing worked for her. And she felt like the only option was, was to take her to an orphanage. And it's an interesting parallel. Right. Because their situations aren't that different and their upbringing is massively different because of not just their own decisions, but the consequences of how easy they were able to fill in these roles in their lives. Um, so one of the big things about the series that I enjoy as far as like looking at it as a story is that there are two women who are without significant others in the beginning of their, well, in this current part of their lives. And they're arguably the most well-rounded and better off characters. Right. Because one is done Becky and the other one is the cop's mom. And they're one's a widower and one's a single mother. Yeah. And 
when you look at their relationships, they're doing better socially than every other married couple in the series. The, yeah, like the women, all their husbands are like total idiots. They're useless. Yeah. And, and they're, they're actually either holding their wives back or a burden upon their wives right. that the widow and the single mother are actually free of because they don't have a man in their lives. And a lot of the animosity that these two characters received. Now the old woman has been at this game for a very long time. So, so no one really messes with her. Yeah, she's the, she's the boss of Ongsen. Yeah. She takes nothing from yeah. no one. <laughs> so, but, but the Becky being the new person is getting the brunt of it and is getting protected from by this woman for much the same reason. Cause this was her life at a certain point when she decided that she wouldn't remarry. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the younger women that are recently married are really on Dunbecky because they look at her success without the burden of the men in their lives being either relatives or being husbands. And they're like, that could have been me. And then they're I'd. also <laughs> in fear of her taking their husbands away. And Right, uh, because that's the thing that they do have. And there's not like their husbands and them have a bad relationship. No. It's just that like... She's young and attractive and... Right, you know, interesting. and they all go to her bar for business yeah. because that's the only place they can go at the middle of the night and get a drink. Yeah, right. Because it's the only bar in town. Right, and so their husbands sometimes uh, spend too much money there, which is well. I take the back that there are other places that are open late, but they all are related in one way or another. So while they're drunk, if they say something, their hus- wives gonna, are going to hear about it. Yeah, and they're not going to with her. Except because, for now. Yeah, well, because she's the only place that is separate from their own microcosm. Right. Like, everyone's related to everyone. This is a small town. They know each other. They're going to talk. If you say something stupid, you're so going to hear about it. So they viewed her bar, really, as their boy, boys club. Right, which is what it become. Yeah. And there's nothing, you know, wrong with that in any way. But no, this is it's how just their safe, safe like, place, because, <laughs> as, because, as people call it nowadays. As, as, as you realize, when you get the husbands alone, all the husbands are only so incompetent and only so unique in their situation because they're all stressed out about how best to take care of their wives. Like, like seriously, like, um, the one that owns the bar, the one that owns the property that the bar is rented from. Yeah. His wife is an attorney. I yeah, think? And she is like the best divorced attorney, attorney in, in the, in the, the area. entire area. And yeah. literally, literally, she he has, has a good job too. He does, but it doesn't matter because his wife is such a strong presence. Yeah. She's extremely strong willed and very right. smart. Right. Right. She is so domineering as a person. Not that she's like forcing him in any way or anything like that, but she just takes up so much of the space in his life. She's so big as a presence that he is Desperate for recognition. So he wants to uh, make everybody be his friend. Yeah. And, and he's he's an optometrist, by the way. So he, has, he doesn't have a small job. He has a nice job. Yeah, especially for a village like this. Yeah. Where th- he's that probably of, the only optometrist. Right. And he's also the richest person in the village. Yeah. Between him and his wife. Because yeah. they're the only two people that have such strong businesses. Right. And he also, his family was rich from the get-go. So, right. So he, he had a rich upbringing. And uh, he, because she's such a big presence, he wants to become governor of that region. Region, or, yeah. yeah. Because because he he needs to have one thing in his life where he is better than his wife. And so the thing that happens with him is is Don Becky has a uh, she's kind of a worker, really a close friend. Uh, she. Uh, I can't ever say her name right, but basically uh, her name is uh, Hung Me, uh, and she is she she bums off everyone. She she'll she'll go over to the to the uh, to the area where the guys are drinking and she'll drink their leftover beer. And, yeah, she's and, she's, and, the and she's chillac- a klepto. Yeah, she's the collect. Uh, sorry, not klepto. Uh, she's the she's the typical like youngster, like just in college or just out of college who just is bumming around their neighborhood. You yes. know what I'm saying? And that is totally her as a character. And she actually respects him. And, and yeah, she's the only person who does. She just, she generally has a, because everyone knows why he's the way he is. Right. Everyone's so they feel it. sorry for him. Right. And they pity him. Yeah. And everyone's kind of leaning into it. So all the things that he's looking for, he doesn't get genuinely from anyone. Except for her. Except for her. And then so it turns into this thing to where his wife thinks he's cheating on her and all this and that. And really he's just looking for recognition. Right. 
it, it, like it's and really respect. it's really easy to solve most of these people's problems, but because of the way their society yeah, is, yeah, in Korea, yeah, they they can't actually communicate like we would. So like the one thing he wants more than anything, and the thing that would solve all of his problems is for his amazing wife to say. I married a good man, and I'm proud of my husband, yeah. and that would set him straight for the rest of his life. She, it, she, not even at the end of the series. <laughs> she never once, okay, says that. Right. They start patching things up, but she still never says that. To right. Him, and she's so, not going to ever. Right. Yeah. As long as she there's does an it, understanding. Yeah. As long as she does it, she she's won. Yeah. She, she like she owns him in the relationship. As long as she never gives him respect, which is the, the the most horrible thing, but it's just understood. And the funny part with her character is, is she thinks it's uh, at first Don Becky who is having an affair with him, and she is completely jealous of her. She wants to shut down her bar and all this and that, and and it's not her. And Ow. it's funny because like Don Becky hates him. He keeps asking for free peanuts. And she runs a business. And, and, and but, but see, for him, it's not even that he can't pay the two dollars for the peanuts. It's a show of respect. respect. And she won't do it. And, it, and <laughs> because she won't do it, she's the person he wants the respect of the most. Right. Because, because she's like his wife. Right. He he sees her as a stand in for his wife. So if he could never get his wife to say you're a good husband and I respect you, he wants Don Becky to say you're a good man. Man, and I respect you. And he—he's actually a very likable person. Once you get towards the end of the series, and like, he's a good guy. He's like, a really good guy. He's been supporting this community the entire time. When someone's in debt or they need help or they need to cover a medical bill, he's the guy that takes care of them. But everyone knows that he's just out there looking for a bit of self fulfillment and self respect, and they—they they just they give it to him, but it's always insincere because they're happy that he's helping. It's it, it's out of pity every time. Time, yeah. And he can tell. And so he's just like he'll take him to, to go <laughs> eat somewhere or something. And and the only of uh, the only guy that doesn't show him respect is Don Becky's love interest. And that's only because and in the, you know they grow a relationship, but it's only because he sees how he treats Don Becky and he doesn't really understand his background and why he is the way he is. And the reason why we come to understand it is because every other man explains it to him. Explains it to Has the to cop. repeat it to him. Yeah, yeah. That the reason why he's like, like this. lay off. He doesn't really <laughs> want your woman. Yeah, he just wants respect. If yes. you re- like, remember, there's a, he gets pressed he's with like a lawsuit. He's like a puppy dog. He gets pressed with a lawsuit by the guy early because if you try to like shame him publicly, that's the thing that he'll do. He'll 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 try to pressure you. Well, into, he stole his wallet. He did. He did. But and, he he's a police officer, so his excuse was was he didn't pay for the peanuts at the bar. Right, and and neither one of them is like in the right in this situation, but. It's something that's a demerit for the uh, for the optometrist. Yeah. So because he's being publicly shamed in this Goutet. way, he wants to uh, like file a lawsuit yeah. against Walk, and everyone's telling him that if you apologize and just like call him boss once, he'll drop the entire lawsuit. Yeah, and say you'll go eat somewhere with him because the only thing that he wants is for you to respect him. That's it. And he drops everything. He tells uh, he uh, basically he sucks up to him in a way about him being you know, future governor and all that. And he just perks right up. And he's happy with that because that's all that he wants. So it's really interesting. All the characters are what sold the series to yeah, me. Yeah, the character, that, it, 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 I was telling the guys, I was like, I do like Korean dramas, but it takes a lot for me to really get invested into Korean dramas. I have to have a really good one. Uh, I got spoiled on my first sets. Uh, the first one I remember watching, and they turned it into an American drama. It's not nearly as good as the original, is Good Doctor. Yeah, um, that's the uh, the samurai, not a samurai, he's not a samurai. The warrior travels through time looking for a doctor for the emperor. Nope, not it. The good doctor is the one where the guy that is ha- has a mental impairment, and but he's so determined to become a doctor anyways. Oh, okay, nope. Yeah. It's kind of like Patch Adams. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, yeah. I remember it now. Yeah, it's, it's really good, and they turned it into an American drama. It's good, too. It's just not as good, but that's how I got to start off, and it's known as one of the most popular Korean dramas. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, there's a lot to this uh, because there's 20 episodes that are over an hour long. Yeah, it, it's a full viewing experience. You do need to dedicate roughly about a full day to watching all of it. Uh, more than a day. That's well, a, 24 hours is yeah. about enough to cover all yeah, of it. Yeah, but most people aren't going to sit down and... No, I mean, the actual view time is yeah, 24 about, hours. Yeah, it's about 24 hours, yeah. Yeah, Um, and so... 
when you're dealing with it, uh, oh, by the way, while all this is happening, there is an actual serial killer. There's a, there's a there's a subplot, and it is the subplot that there is a which is in a lot of Korean dramas. There's <laughs> always some sort of serial killer or something. Well, it's not just that, but like, because, but they do a good job with it. Yeah, well, because all of the conflict in the series is interpersonal and is basically resolvable with dialogue if these people just talked to each other they could fix all of their issues and that's a big that's a big part of why the the serial killer was the way he was right yeah when you get to understanding why he became a serial killer and what he's doing um but the the over the underflow conflict is the serial killer and the serial killer is a reflection of things going on on the surface. Yes. He, he, he is a actual directly related to the themes of the series. And he thinks that those themes are a joke. So he kills certain people. Right. Because he's pushing back against the society, just like Dunbecky's pushing back against Which society. Which she annoys him the most. Because she she's, once again, a standout in his in his view of the world. The, the big issue, one of the bigger issues... Without with, trying to spoil this. Without spoiling it, the, the, the community can't get over the fact that she still smiles and looks happy. They don't understand. She shouldn't be happy. She's a single mother. She's all by herself. You shouldn't be happy in this situation. She should be stressed out from operating a business by herself. Yes. Because a lot of these people... But a lot of this smiling is just a show. Right, because she needs to be strong for her child. Yeah. You know? Who, he is a very strong-willed boy. Yes, the kid's adorable. Yes. Also mean. Yes. Really, really mean. He he, he, he likes beating up some of the other kids. Not only, well, no, he, he originally is getting bullied. That's right. And then the police officer comes in and... Like, gives him an opportunity to kind of stand on his own two feet. Yeah. And then once he stands up, he's just like, all right, try me. I'll fight anybody. <laughs> that kid's adorable. <laughs> and also her her mom was fantastic. A really nice touch, yeah. Yeah. You know, I had a kind of left wing. You know, I wasn't expecting the, the the way the story went with her. Right, because we were like orphan, and we're like, okay, cool. And then uh, we assume your parents are dead. Yes, <laughs> but no. We find out that she has a mom, and 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 there's a lot to it. And there's, I'm not gonna say too much because she was actually my favorite subplot. Yeah, definitely. I felt like it was the most fulfilling. Right. If the serial killer is the most thematic, then like, of all the subplots, the mom is definitely the most wholesome. Yes. Yeah. Like it. It had me like I was at work and uh, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have watched that episode. I was like, oh, oh my gosh, guys. Yeah, no. Well, I I don't have that problem. I know you don't, but I did. <laughs> but yeah, no. It's 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 a really good series. We both fully recommend it. Um, uh, sorry, Cussler didn't talk much, but he's not a K drama guy. I I mean I don't want to interrupt you guys when you're talking about something you guys really like, and I don't. I don't have, have anything. The, to really, the faintest clue. I don't have so, anything to say about it, so I'm, uh, I'm letting you guys have your moment. A, a thing to understand about the podcast is, um, unlike some other like more organized podcasts or shows, we do not require anyone to pick up the subjects we're talking about. We're perfectly fine with informing each other of them, even if someone has never seen them before. So. Unlike where you would be like, all right, we're going to be talking about whatever today, a TV show. You have to now go and watch this TV show so you understand what we're talking about. That's a lot of stress on each individual member. Right. So we, we treat it like when we're hosting a show, like he's hosting uh, Branch Wars right now. We, the people on the side, though giving commentary, are members of the audience. And he tells this as if we've never seen it. And if we have, like I have, we can, you know, interject right. and yeah. play off of each other. But if not, then Custer is just a member of the audience here. And just like you guys, we hope that we can sell the series to you, that he'll pick it up in his free time, which has happened. Devontae and Matt have actually started watching some of the things yeah. that I've recommended. Yeah, and we've crossed this over a time and And he's time actually got me to watch Fate. Fate. So, like... We're just members of the audience when we're co-hosting. Don't we're worry. Al- Don't we're worry. allowing each other to grow. Don't worry. When I finish some animes, I'm gonna I'm gonna do, be doing stuff like this too. Yeah, you you will really like this one. I recommend this one, and I always recommend Good Doctor like every time. Uh, I also re- recommend uh, Hello My Twenties. Yeah, you're you're very much into the slice of life. Which I is. love the slice of life K dramas. I can't help I, it. I know Dane's. They not get me as in the field. He I, likes the ones that are like uh, melodrama, period, pieces. period drama, and melodrama. Period yeah. pieces, melodramas, and uh, fantasy yeah. are are my big three. Stacy likes uh, some of the fantasy ones. Uh, I think she watched the Goblin God or whatever it was. Yeah, yes. Stacy said, "Yep, yeah, she likes those." Which is also a bit of slice of life with fantasy mixed in, so yeah. But the fantasy elements just brighten things up, yeah. right, as opposed to you know actual people living their day to day life. I just love the slice of life because I get to see 
uh, a different part of the world and how it is portrayed. It might not be fully accurate in their actual society, but it is interesting in their Korean drama society. It's always a little bit stereotypical, but yeah. stereotypes are there for a reason. Right. You There's have to a little do bit something. A little bit of truth. truth yeah. The, the underlying message is there. You just shouldn't think everything's yeah. this extreme. Right. It, it, and, and the show has a very great message. Uh, I think you should give it a chance. Uh, try it out. Uh, if you've never watched anything that doesn't speak English, <laughs> Do uh, it. I hope that you're the type of person that can read yeah. subtitles. Yeah, uh, broaden your horizons. <laughs> We're not asking you to go to a class and learn oh. Korean. Yeah, because so, sub- subtitles are rough for most people who haven't had uh, any experience with them. Got a yeah. funny story. My uh, my grandma, when Shin Godzilla first came out in the uh, U.S., yeah, it was originally it was the Japanese version with subtitles. subtitles. Um, and she was not used to that at all. She was expecting it to be in English, and she did She did not enjoy the movie as much as her second viewing when I brought over the Blu-ray with English uh, with an English dub from it. Yeah, <laughs> she enjoyed that one much more. But uh, it, was qu- it was quite funny because my grandma was just like, I can't keep up with this. I don't know what's going on. A lot of the Netflix ones actually do have English uh, dubbing over it. I don't recommend watching it with the English dub. Watch it with the original voice. Yeah, because... Look, it doesn't line up. Um, it's not like animation. Well, not only that, but it's kind of you, you, you. One, you get the speed racer effect because you get the old Godzilla effect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Godzilla, Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> I still like to refer to speed racer. Speed racer is still my favorite iteration yeah. of that. Yeah, my dad, my dad grew up watching that and loved it. Uh, but regardless, so what happens with uh, redubbings of uh, vocals of live action of live action is um, they'll never line up. Well, well, tone, inflection, and jargon are very important, and some things cannot translate. Yeah. Like, I saw something very interesting. There was one I was trying to watch. It's called Triad Princess, and it had the option of – it's uh, a uh, Chinese drama, and it had the option of English, uh, Mandarin, Taiwanese, and Korean. While I – I watch more Korean dramas. I know if I would watch it in with the Korean language, it would not be the same. Yeah, it's it, you. It's really hard to ask people who are not the actors themselves to carry the emotional weight of a scene purely with their voice when they're not there in the presence of the scene themselves. So it's, it's always than a detraction. Doing voice acting for something animated or right. a video game. Yeah, it, it's always a detraction. So yeah. just watch it in its original language nine times out of ten. This isn't like sub versus dubs. Anime is completely different. Yeah, I was yeah that's say, a totally I'm, different thing. I'm the advocate for dubs on anime, but even I agree that this is something that should be watched yeah, in the original when, language. When it's live action, it's a very different right, situation. Right. Yeah, anime is a unique thing there. This is not sub versus dub. Sub is the only <laughs> way. Uh, it, unless, unless you... Speak the language, then you can turn off subs. Obviously, <laughs> but other than then that, that would be your dub. Right, right. Then that's the only way. But anyway, that'll uh, wrap that up. I think. Yeah, I, th- <laughs> I just wanted to let y'all know about a great K drama. I appreciate y'all watching. I appreciate you listening. Most of all, thank you for letting us get to the root of our geek culture with you. Uh.